This here is an IBM 4694-024. It's a narrow unit. Uh, my first narrow unit. Obviously, I have two of the full width ones. Uh, came with no plastics, unfortunately. I do have the top panel. It's just off it for the, making this video easier. Uh, the plastic, it came with a front cover or a bezel. Did not come with the top piece. The bezel, unfortunately, got damaged in shipping, so... I was able to find another bezel and another top piece on eBay and I ordered them. Unfortunately, that was more than the system cost me, but uh, it is what it is to get it to the, to the point I want it. I also have sort of, I say a whole plan for what I want to do with this system. Some of the peripherals are behind it. Uh, that'll be on it, that'll be on it. This'll be on it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a very, it's a, older model than my other two it's also the narrow unit so it's like kind of built a little differently i think to begin with it has this different kind of ram in it and this particular model actually doesn't have uh, vga capability this is the case has a vga connector on it which is what this is as you can see there's nowhere on the board for that to plug in so they have this expansion card which does work uh, when i first got this i actually plugged it the VGA in here, not realizing that that was not connected and was not getting an output. But uh, when I actually, I actually got it when I was in college, so it was in my dorm. I didn't really have a lot of time to screw around with it. But when I got it home, I I worked on that and figured that out. Uh, so I got a light here, so I can give you a better view of the board. There really isn't a lot of documentation on these, which is partially why, why I wanted to do a video on the inside, but it's got a very uh, old looking board, as you can tell, uh, this copyright is 1992, PC speaker there, bunch of chips, there's a fuse in it, I'm not real sure what that's for, tempted to take it out and see what happens, but uh, some sort of a connector there. I don't actually recognize that that particular one. I'll have to look into that. Or maybe someone in the comments would know. There's actually two of them. So yep, there's a pin there, 1998. You can see on that sticker there. We have a pretty basic board. Then you got your normal, your floppy, and your three and a half inch IDE connector there. The riser card has two ISAs on it, no PCI. The uh, full-size units have, or maybe even the newer, narrow units have three slots, so you have uh, two ISAs and a PCI. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for inside. I'm not real knowledgeable on what each chip does and all that, but. That's pretty much it. There's four megs of RAM in here. These also have a sticker on them. Also 1998, June 15th. You can kind of read it there. So the system is clearly 1998, and I believe these came out in either 92 or 94, this particular model. Uh, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and turn it on here. I'll show you some of the interesting things about it. This is an IBM 4080, 486 SLC2, it says. It's actually, it's telling me there's a um, CMOS failure, a real-time clock failure. But I do not see one on here. I don't see one under the card either, so I'm not real sure. Uh, if it's just not equipped with one, and you know it's meant to get that from uh, the controller, or, or what exactly is going on going on there? You can see copyright ninety two to ninety four. Uh, it's for some other company. I thought that was IBM, but no. And then eighty seven to ninety for Qualtech, Qualtel. 85 to 92 for the BIOS, so. so it's saying that the CMOS is corrupt. 
when I looked that air coat up, I didn't really see much on it. And everything seems to work fine, so I'm not really sure what they mean by that, but I'll press F2. The setup is pretty interesting. So it says all that there. Hit any key to continue. Showing the time. Thinks it's January 1st of 1990. See, there's a little bit more on here. If I find page down, show the boot sequence there. I think that's it. So that's pretty much all it has. It's got a very interesting BIOS, and that was something I didn't immediately notice was that there was no um, heat sink on this, uh, which is interesting. And I'm not real sure which one is actually the processor. It's probably that one. Well, I'm not for sure, to be honest, uh, without like really reading it, I guess. Yeah, I'm also not, I doubt this could actually run any OS other than 4690. Uh, clearly they intend you to be able to store stuff on it itself as there is a spot for a hard drive but oh yeah one other thing I can talk about as well is it came with this which I've not I've yet to put anything else to see what it actually has if anything but 4694 diagnostics so whoever made this clearly was knowledgeable as they know that these are the model numbers for these have three digits so it's interesting and there's a bunch of other stuff under that really isn't that readable. It's like 512 of 87, 9 of 9. Hard to say what that was. And I did tape it a little bit so it doesn't peel. Yeah, I can't wait to see what's actually on this. Uh, but yeah, there's really not much else to see. Um, I can show you the saving or the exit menu here. So i just been hitting it for, so I haven't actually modified anything. It does take a minute. So I'll let it try to boot. Obviously it's not going to, but. I have this beautiful nine inch CRT here. Normally it sits up there. This is another new system I'll be talking about soon. Or in, in, in the next few videos. We're on U003 now. That's the uh, 40 character display, like a 4683 would use, but with a different case plastic over it. So we have forms. So this is where it gets interesting. See how those codes come up as it tries to PXE boot. Over here it's saying RX2. Repeating that. I'm not sure what that means. I'm, I'm sure someone would in the comments. So also don't know what any of the codes mean either. I'm sure they're in the manual or something. I think it might do a few other things here. I, I did go through this process one other time. The file server cannot be found, and then it starts over here. All these long codes. Then when it goes to NW202, it's back to the RX2. And I imagine this process just repeats. Power button isn't 100% on this either, but see that is this system. Uh, seems to work all right. Pretty good deal. Uh, I was happy to find one. I mean, I've been wanting a narrow one for a while, and I pretty much got everything on the way. 
that I can think of to have this pretty much just set up peripheral wise and all that. Like I said, some of it's here. It's gonna have two pole displays. I got that really nice printer down there I showed. And I got a keyboard on the way, so. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching.